My name is Michael Morris. I'm the superintendent of the Amherst Pelham Regional School District and welcome to the latest episode of Window into ARPS. I'm really excited about this episode today. Uh, something that's near and dear to my heart is um, intercollegiate uh, athletics, um, interschool athletics. And we're thrilled, I'm thrilled to have Rich Farrow, who is the athletic director for our district, and Zora Dahlman, who is a junior at Amherst Regional High School and multi-sport athlete, um, to talk a little bit about how the athletic program works uh, in, in the high school and how it influences the lives of our students um, uh, all across the 7 through 12 continuum, grade 7 through 12 continuum. So thank you for being here. For sure. Yeah. So Rich, can you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got connected to yeah, athletics? Yeah, for sure. So I've been a, a lifelong athlete. Um, <clears throat> I went to Amherst Regional High School, played three sports the whole time I was, I was there, and I'm, I'm continued my athletic career in college. I played lacrosse at Union College, and, and it's connected in New York. Um, and when I graduated from there, came back and um, immediately got involved with coaching uh, the high school hockey team here in Amherst as an assistant. Um, and then after a couple of years, realized that teaching was something I'd be interested in and, and got involved with teaching and was lucky enough to get a position at the middle school um, where I coached the high school hockey team for six or seven seasons and then um, got involved in administration. And so from there, um, did a little stint as the dean of students at the middle school and, and I was lucky enough to get up to the high school in, in, in this role, which I've been doing for the past seven years. Um, but I continue to participate as much as I can in athletics and, and, um, and coach at the younger ages and, and work with all of our student athletes and, and uh, coaches and teams. Yeah, it's great. Thank you, Rich. Mm -hmm. And Zora, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I've lived in Amherst most of my life, and I just remember, like, little, I was always moving. I hated sitting <laughs> still. So I think that's when my parents were like, okay, we're going to put her in sports. <laughs> so seventh grade, I started, and I played field hockey and lacrosse at Amherst Middle School, and I fell in love with both of them, especially field hockey. That, like, clicked right away. And then, yeah, I continued playing through my freshman and sophomore year field hockey, and I did club field hockey and um, and then this year I started Nordic skiing too because I always had the um, winter off and I didn't like that so I was like <laughs> okay we're, we'll try something new and that's been really great. Fantastic yeah and I shared before that I was a free sport athlete both in high school and mm -hmm. college and I uh, ran cross country track and both seasons of track at Amherst College and so for some embarrassing photos of me they have all the teams up historically <laughs> at Amherst College gym and you know look yep. at me as a 19 year old you know probably not the, my favorite picture of myself, um, <laughs> but it was hugely, on a serious note, it was incredibly impactful on my both high school and college experience. Um, and I found both academically as well as, you know, and athletically, there was one season in college that I was injured and it was one of my poorest academic semesters I had because mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't in the flow and, and I think athletics for me, uh, I enjoyed it for many reasons, but also gave me a schedule and it gave me a structure right. that uh, I really enjoyed. And I couldn't, to you, to your point, I was, pretty stable and not, I mean, not moving around much that <laughs> semester. And for me, that really didn't help my academic performance as well. And there's a lot of research to support that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, just, you know, from my side of things and <clears throat> administering hundreds of kids every year, um, you know, the, the pattern is definitely there in terms of how well kids do when they're involved in athletics and when they're not involved in athletics. And sometimes we'll get families who will want to pull a, one of their student athletes out if they're not performing as well in school. Um, and we try to encourage you know, families to allow their kids to stay involved um, in, some, in some level because you have an extra set of eyes on you know, our student athletes at all times with a coach and myself. Um, and student athletes schedule their time. You yeah. know, they have yeah. to schedule their time a lot better and so there's less procrastinating that kind of happens. So I think it's yeah. definitely yeah. Definitely the case. And Definitely experienced that. You know. I think that when, like everyone I've talked to says, when you have the structure of like three to five after school, then you get home and you're like, okay, now I need to do my homework. But if you just go home, I'm like, I can do it whenever. And that's <laughs> when it gets like, you get off. But also just like, I think um, after sports, I feel more awake and I feel better. Whereas if I go home and do nothing, I kind of feel bad the whole day and it makes me more tired yeah. than having that structure in the day. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So Rich, can you tell a little bit about how many sports we currently offer? Yeah, so we offer um, at this point in time approximately 25 different sports, uh, which is, if not the largest number of, of any school in the Pioneer Valley, it's, it's right up there. Um, you know, and we have some of the things that other schools don't have, which is one of the ones that, that Zora's doing mm -hmm. is Nordic skiing. 
um, ourselves and uh, Mohawk are the only two schools in the Pioneer Valley who have Nordic skiing and we compete in the league in the Berkshires mm -hmm. um, with all the Berkshire schools. Um, so that's just an example of one of the sports that, you know, is very different, that's become very popular, um, especially for student athletes like Zora who <laughs> trying to fill a gap yeah. you know, in between in, in the wintertime yeah. and you don't have to have had any experience with it prior to, to coming around. So that's, you know, one of the sports that we offer that's unique. Obviously, Ultimate Frisbee is a huge sport in Amherst. Um, and some people blame ultimate for like lack of numbers in other <laughs> sports, but the reality is we got plenty of student athletes out there. There's plenty of spaces for kids to play on all of our teams. Um, but but ultimate is another program that's that's you know unique to us. Um, and then we offer everything you know all of the all of our running sports and field sports and um, you know everything in between. And so it's um, you know we offer a really wide variety of, of programs for sure. I know one of the focuses uh, for as long as I've been in this role has really been making sure that uh, male and female athletes have similar experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder, as a female student athlete, if you could speak to how you've experienced things as a female um, involved in ARHS sports. Yeah, so for both field hockey and lacrosse, it's an all-female team. And that's, it's so empowering because you, um, you're just working with like really strong women from all ages and you have like role models as coaches who are like showing you that you can be strong and you can be like powerful and all of that. And definitely on my field hockey and lacrosse teams, like we've gotten so close. You have um, like sleepovers and you bond so much and it feels like, it never feels like we're below the boys team and I think Amherst does a really good job of that. Like it's never like, okay, boys lacrosse is so important and girls lacrosse, like it's nothing, it doesn't matter. Like there's equal opportunities for both and there's equal, like the coaches are so great and I think there's a lot of good attention mm -hmm. to sports. But then for Nordic it was a co-ed team and that was a totally different experience and equally as good, <laughs> just so different to have like, cause I, I hadn't had like male coaches before cause for field hockey and lacrosse it had been female, but it was, um, yeah, for Nordic, again, equal attention paid to the boys and the girls. We had some really good girls, we had some really good boys. It didn't feel like separated at all. We all had the same workouts and everything. Yeah. So it's really good at like equality between the two genders. Yeah, yeah. glad to hear that. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's definitely a challenge at times in terms of, you know, there's the <clears throat> best practices in terms of trying to make things as equal as possible between all of our mm -hmm. student athletes. Um, and then, you know, you get into Title IX where, you know, the law, which talks about, you know, what things you have to legally do um, to make sure that, you know, we comply with, with that. Yeah. Um, and that, that's challenging at times, mm -hmm. um, but I think we do a pretty good job of, of making sure that, you know, we're offering, um, you know, equal opportunity to, to everybody, you know, within our athletic programs. Yeah. Um, and Zora is lucky enough to have a couple of really awesome long-time coaches in, yeah. you know, in lacrosse and Carol Samuels and, and Kelly Zomack, who was yeah. a, an Amherst grad. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, Michelle Risch with field hockey, who's come on and, and rebuilding our program in field hockey, yeah. which is really struggling She's done a few years job. Yeah. 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 And maybe so. you could speak, either of you could speak to the impact that coaches have uh, on the student athletes. So, you know, one of the things that, that I experienced both, you know, in my student days, uh, but I also see in my vantage point now is that Coaches can have a different relationship than other educators mm -hmm. um, with the student, students we have. It's mm -hmm. not better or worse, but it is substantially different than the relationship of a teacher, a parent educator, or a principal. Um, so I don't know if either of you could speak to that. Yeah, you want to yeah. go? Like I said before, like both of my co like all of the coaches have been just such incredible role models for me, and they've all like all the sports I play. Like we want to win, obviously, like that's a goal, but they want you to win by having fun and working hard. So they focus on that. And that's been really good because I think that's just a good like lesson to know. Like if you work hard and you enjoy it, then you're gonna like start getting the results that you want. It's yeah. not like if you don't win, then we suck. Like that's bad. Right. So they've been really good at building people up and making people feel included. And especially like you said, the Nordic team, yeah. like at a unique sport that we have at Amherst. Like I had never been on skis before, oh, wow. and I was <laughs> able to join the team this year, and they were so welcoming and so supportive, and it didn't feel awkward at all. Yeah. So yeah. And that's a sport that you're going to be able to do forever. Yeah, You know, exactly. it's like the lacrosse and the field hockey, mm -hmm. you know, once, once the knees and things like that. So yeah. <laughs> in that direction, which I'm sure <laughs> Mr. Morris has also experienced some, you know, those things become hard to do. But something like Nordic skiing yeah. is, that's something you're going you're gonna to be able to do forever. Yeah, you know? and I loved it. It was so yeah. much fun. Yeah, I started skiing, you know, 10 years ago, you know, cross-country yeah. skiing. And I was like, why, why wasn't I doing this when I was younger? Such great you know? exercise, yeah. too. Yeah, oh, yeah it definitely is. But in terms of, in terms of the coaching, um, you know, I think all of us having been athletes, it's like you go through and, and probably count on your hand the number of coaches who you really considered like, you know, good, 
good, really mm -hmm. solid quality coaches, and and that's you know one of the challenges to try and find people who um, are qualified, um, people who have the time of day, right, to be able to come in and, and work with our student athletes. And traditionally, you know, when when I was in school, and I'm sure when you were in school, our coaches were mostly teachers. Yeah. And so it was people who were in the building who already knew right. the kids. We're in a different place now where, you know, more than half of our coaching staff are people from the outside. And that can be a really positive thing mm -hmm. um, because you're, get, you're gaining some experience with people who, you know, are local business owners and who, are, who do different things than in the, in the classroom. Um, but it can also be challenging just in terms of getting new coaches up to speed who might know a sport really well. But right don't necessarily, um, you know, have it worked with, with kids at this age group and in a school setting and, and following all yeah. that kind of stuff. But the main thing that, you know, I talk about is with coaches is trying to build those relationships and, mm -hmm. and work with their student athletes and, and to kind of pull the positive things out of them as much as possible. And so, yeah, I think, you know, the impact of, of coaches on, on student athletes is huge. And I have a lot of coaches who will also try and you know, who are educators professionally, but, but just in general, I think anybody who gets involved with coaching does it because they like working with kids. Yeah. Um, and if, you know, if you don't, that becomes apparent pretty quickly, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> tend to find something else to do. Right. Um, but, but I would say, you know, some of the most influential people in my experience, and you know, in my life were, were the coaches that I had. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it's, it's something that we need to take advantage of within the, you know, school setting, is using those folks to help us. Um, and we have a lot of coaches who, who go above and beyond in, in, in many different ways. Um, Jim Matusko, who is just done with his, you know, 35 years of coaching <laughs> basketball in Amherst, yeah. 20 plus, you know, at Amherst High School. Um, you know, he obviously took a team to a state title in 2003, but having worked with him over the past several years, the things he's done behind the scenes are even more powerful than the things that he's done on the court. You know, yeah. working with families of, of kids who have um, who have been injured and needed surgery, and helping with transportation. You know, with with family members who didn't have it, and working with you know schools to try and find avenues for all of our kids who don't necessarily have the resources to be able to get out and get into you know a four year college right away. Trying to find a path for those kids, and um, you know, and those are the things that people don't see you know they see the wins and losses and that type of thing but they don't see what's happened you know behind the scenes and yeah. our coaches I think do a, a great job of you know of that stuff off the top of your head what would you guess you know how many students uh, student athletes or how many high school students participate in inner school athletics I think some people might perceive oh it's just it's a pretty small number they hear Nordic and they might think it's four or five yeah. students, which I know is, is <laughs> yeah. quite, not, quite the opposite. Yeah. Do you have any sense of yeah. that? Yeah, so, I, so we have, you know, we have our, our, our 9 through 12 programs. We also, we're kind of unique in Amherst in that we offer a lot of uh, middle school opportunities as well, which yeah. most schools in the area, um, at least the bigger schools, don't offer middle school at all. So um, at the high school level, I would say <clears throat> in any given year, you know, if you count all of our seasons together, um, I'd say two-thirds to three-quarters of our kids participate in at least one sport, you know, so six to 750 kids over the course of a year participating in at least one sport. Um, Zora is, is unique in the sense that the multi-sport athlete right. is, um, is a rare breed these days, um, and it's something that um, it, it's really the best way to go, and college coaches and, and people will say that's what you should be doing, but there's a lot of influences right now keeping people from doing that. So I think it's, you know, yeah. it's great that Zora's doing, you know, multiple sports. And then, so at the middle school, it's a similar kind of ratio. We've got, um, I would say over the course of the year, more than half of the middle schoolers will participate in a school-sponsored sport as well. So um, in the spring, just as an example, we'll have approximately 300 high school athletes and probably 150 middle school athletes um, in the spring. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's a substantial part of our, our population for sure. How mm -hmm. large are the teams that, that you participate in, just to make it on a more local level? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, field hockey, we kind of had to bring the middle school up this right. year. It started, like you said, mm -hmm. Michelle really built up the program. Yeah. It was really small my freshman year, and we're slowly like getting there so we can have a full varsity JV and middle school team. So this year we had a varsity and JV team, but the middle schoolers right. were part of the JV team. And that was a similar situation for lacrosse. Yeah. But again, we're building. We yeah. have so many freshmen that are playing lacrosse Fantastic. this year, so it's yeah. really exciting. Yeah, you build the pipeline, that's going to yeah. a lot of yeah. <laughs> Both for participation, yeah. but also for outcomes. For, for Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the lacrosse program, 
for youth is getting really good. Yeah. So we have so many opportunities for that, which yeah. is bringing people in, yeah. I think. Yeah. And um, yeah, Nordic's a big team. How many, you kids, expect how many kids were with Nordic this year, do you know? I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, there wanna, was a lot because they brought in the middle was, schoolers. I want to say it was close to 40 this year. That wow. we no, had yeah, it Nordic. was. It was yeah. 40 yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. And a huge team yeah. um, brought in middle schoolers too, yep. but they were really great. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So how does that, you know, given the broad participation in sports, how does that athletic culture fit in, you know, or connect to the larger culture of the school? Yeah, I think at Amherst, it, there's a really, there's a good athletic culture, but it doesn't necessarily dominate the school. Right. So, like, I have friends from all my sports teams, and I'm so close to them, but I also have friends that do theater and do dance. Like, so the athletic culture is strong, and you feel very connected to your team and connected to other teams, but you also, it doesn't dominate. Like, theater is huge. Other things are huge at the school. Yep. I think that's good. Yeah, no, I would, I would completely agree with that. Having, like I said, having grown up here and experienced athletics, mm -hmm. you know, when I was a kid here um, to now, and I think it's a similar type of thing. And, you know, people give us a hard time sometimes that we're not more kind of rah rah. Right, yeah. You know, and like, true. where is everybody yeah. at football <laughs> games and, and those sorts of things, you know. Um, and, and part of it I try to tell people is, well, you know, in any given season, a third of our kids are participating in, in a sport. Yeah. So, you know, that those kids are going to be doing their own thing. They're not necessarily going to be coming to games for mm -hmm. to watch other people, you know, and I think people don't sort of tend to think about that as much. Yeah. Um, and like Zora said, we have a lot of student athletes who will um, are involved in, in tons of different things, yeah. you know, which is which is a very cool. Like you don't have to just be an athlete. Right. You can do other things too. Yeah, right. Definitely. Yeah, there's plenty of students who right. play a fall sport and they want to be in the, the yep. yeah, exactly. spring musical or the spring dramatic, you Correct. know, and, yeah. and they, yeah. it's not a mutually exclusive choice that no. yeah. our students have to make. No, and it's, you know, and I think that it would be, I think one thing that, that we've talked about mm -hmm. and, and with some of the student athletes and coaches is sort of like how do, you know, kind of the traditional like school spirit thing you think of with right. athletics, right. right? We're never going to be in a school system where everybody's coming to a football game on Friday night, right? right. That's just not, that's not where we're at, which I'm, I'm perfectly okay with. But I think, I think our student athletes would like to get to a place where um, they're supporting each other a little bit more in terms of mm -hmm. like, are there some things that we can do with, you know, having kind of like teams that are willing to go if the field hockey team, yeah, we're going to go watch the, the soccer team play right. together, you know, that yeah. type of stuff, yeah. I think that is something definitely... that, that we'd like to sort of increase yeah. and so that people feel like they're being supported by their, you know, by their peers and other people within the community. But, I, you know, in general, I think we got a pretty healthy, yeah. Yeah. you know, level of, of kind of school spirit around athletics where it doesn't dominate, but it's definitely an important yeah. aspect. And we have teams that, that compete and do very well, yeah. you know, at the, in Western Mass, but also at the state level. So. Yeah. I think we got a pretty good balance. I definitely agree with that. I think we could get like a little more <laughs> participation at coming to games just right. to get more of that school spirit because you definitely see like even schools that are so close like they have huge football games yeah. and that's like the thing to do on Friday like right. go to the football game and I think yeah we could definitely increase that and get people to also more like unknown sports because yeah. that they usually tend to get less viewers but I think overall it's a good yeah. it's a healthy culture yeah, yeah. I no I can so. say that we you know my own personal high school experience mm -hmm. was that you know once those intra inter school sport kind of camaraderie helps you know yeah. cross country is not a large spectator sport for <laughs> most high <laughs> right. schools and uh, but we had a nice relationship with some of our teams and we hosted a home meet and and it was huge to have um, our you know and, and because yeah. of a home meet our teams all took like a 15 minute break from their practice and just walked over and they oh, could see yeah. the end, right? Because right. cross country, you know, you see the beginning and see the end and right. mm -hmm. in the middle people are off in the woods. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it really does make a difference. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that you're yeah. taking, you yeah. know, thinking about that. And so yeah. as we're talking about challenges, what are some other challenges that you, you know, either of you experience um, as it relates to the athletics program? Mm -hmm. You want to um, start out? Yeah, so definitely like field hockey, it's been a challenge yeah. to build that program up. Because like 10 years or so, we had a really, really strong program. They were competitive in all their games, going off to the postseason and then some, there was a drop in like people signing up for it and we had a lot of switches of coaches. So when I started my freshman year, we did not win a single game. And that was challenging. Like yeah. it's hard to keep getting yourself hyped for games if you feel like you don't have a chance. Because we were playing Longmeadow and act, like these big yeah. schools that have huge programs and we just we, we knew going into the games, like we were just not at the place that they are. Right. But Michelle's done such a great job like building us up and not making us feel discouraged. Like after that season, we came back and she's like, I'm so happy that you're all back here. Like this is going to be a great year. Yeah. She wasn't mad at us for losing. She was like, we're going to get there. She says she has this quote. She's like, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Right. Like we're going to get there. We just got to keep yep. working. So 
we actually had a league switch because we, because of our drop in numbers, right. and that's allowed us to be really competitive and winning these games, which gave us like a boost in morale. Absolutely. And we've made it to the postseason the last two years. Mm -hmm. it's fantastic. So you can yeah. like see like even just the games we're winning, like see the increase. Yep. Yeah, no, it's definitely been a great thing. You know, there's, there's, you know, lots of challenges I think within mm -hmm. athletics, you know, at, at the at the national level where you know money has really come into influence sports from, yeah, the, the little little kids playing all the way up to the definitely. top, um, which has really changed just how to kind of how everything operates. And in a sport like field hockey, where it used to be that there were no. Um, there were no youth programs really anywhere in field hockey. Yeah. Right. You know, when when we were younger, yeah, that's right. Towns like Aguam and Longmeadow and and places like that right. started started youth field hockey, mm -hmm. right? And so then all of a sudden, when our kids are not starting until seventh grade, yeah. you know, and and playing against these programs where the kids are playing from the age of five, right. you know, that's it's challenging to keep a competitive program going and keep kids interested in it. So, yeah. um, you know, it's and and trying to get some of those opportunities for the younger kids to get involved and try things out yeah. Yeah. so we can be more, you know, more competitive at that point, but not going crazy because <laughs> I think a lot of athletics at the youth level is, is yeah, has gone absolutely nuts yeah. and it would be nice to, to rein that back in a little bit and really bring what athletics should be back to the table, yeah. um, you know, in terms of building friendships, learning how to, mm -hmm. you know, commit and be disciplined to something and all those things that I think we've all experienced and that help us in life. Mm -hmm. Um, I think some of that's being lost at this point in time yeah. with sports where it's all sort of about me and am I going to get a scholarship and you know that type of stuff and it's it's too bad that it's kind of headed in that direction but I think we can do some things to yeah. kind of change that so like not having super successful seasons or not being like the team that always wins it hasn't been all negative right. because they're like nobody gets mad at, at another if they make a mistake yeah. again we're so excited when we win like it's <laughs> it's more like we get so excited when we win then we're like mad at each other when we lost that's yeah. never happened and i think it's allowed us to become just a super friendly team and like for all like for all the sports i do like they're yeah. welcoming teams like you can join if you haven't played before yeah. and i think like we would lose that if it was like a huge like competitive atmosphere yeah so. absolutely yeah the challenges Rich yeah, so I think, you know, uh, obviously uh, the financial side of things is is hard as well. And, uh, you know, as you are well aware, our facilities are something that, that are an issue. Um, and our, you know, our new gymnasium is fantastic. And that's really <laughs> brought a nice new atmosphere to the sports that use that, basketball and volleyball and, and whatnot in our PE classes. But our outdoor, you know, our fields and facilities, you know, we're in the middle of this larger sort of long-term uh, project looking at our fields and and what we can do about them and um, but that's that's a huge challenge especially being in New England where the weather is fluctuates so much <laughs> yeah. and you know one year might have no rain for five months and <laughs> our fields are like concrete and or you know like we had this fall we had more rain than we've ever had before and yeah. we had to shut fields down for good portions of the season um, and so you know that for me, I think is one of the biggest challenges, is in, especially in the in the fall and the spring, is trying to make sure that our athletes have, you know, the safe, you know, playing surface to be on um, and and compete at that level. You know, field hockey now, for the most part, is played on you know on astroturf mm -hmm. um, right. or synthetic surface, and so. In some ways, it gives us an advantage because teams come to us. And they're <laughs> they have no on, idea. They have no idea what to do on, on our field. Playing on grass. They have like lumps. <laughs> yeah, the ball's kind of bouncing all over. But yeah. you know, it's <laughs> like the old parquet at the Boston yeah. Garden. Yeah, we yeah. got some tricks yeah. in there. It is. No, it's it is. It's definitely you know, it's definitely the way it is. And I think we do the best we can with what we have. Um, yeah. But it's definitely it's hard. And when you're trying to compete at that level, and other towns, you know, have those facilities, it definitely gives them a little bit of an advantage. You yeah. know. Um, and, and I know we're working at trying to, to get to that place, which is great. Um, and I know it's not going to be an easy process moving forwards, but, you know, I think we're, we're going to get somewhere in the yeah. next couple of years. Um, but I'd say that's, you know, that's a big challenge. And then the other one is, like I said before, is really is finding coaches yeah. um, and people who have the ability and the patience and, you know, are willing to basically come in and do it for very little money, yeah. you know, gas money, essentially. Um, and and that's, that's the other part that's, that's very challenging, yeah. I would say. So we're just about out of time, so I just wanted to offer both of you, if you had one other thing that you wanted to say to the, maybe a middle school student who's coming to high school or their yeah. family about, um, you know, what you get out of being a student yeah. athlete. No, I would definitely recommend trying a sport because you get the teammates, you get the culture, you get the structure. There's so, there's so much that I've gotten 
from sports at Amherst. And even just like starting high school, I came in knowing seniors and knowing yeah. uh, like upperclassmen from preseason field hockey, and that was great. Like that made me feel more comfortable. And it's just, yeah, it's a great thing. I'd recommend it to anyone. Yeah, right. for sure. Um, you know, I think I'm, my wife gives me a hard time because I'm always recruiting kids to play, play <laughs> lacrosse, especially. Yeah. I'm, uh, no matter where we are, the grocery store or we're somewhere, it's, I'm always trying to get more kids to play. <laughs> Um, and, yeah, and, you get, I get, and I get a lot of, well, I've never done that before, you know, I wouldn't be any good at that. And I think that's, I think that's yeah. the thing is it's like, I can't tell you how many kids and people, I, you know, I went to school with and I've seen over the years who tried something new when they got to middle school or even into high school. And, and some of those kids are, are the ones who were the most successful in that sport and went on to play at the college level. Yeah. Um, and so it's, you just never know what you're going to be good at. And yeah. so to come out and try it and... You know, nobody's going to give you a hard time for coming out and trying something if, if you're not good at it right away. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of kids coming into middle school sort of feel like, I've never done that before. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't, you know, I don't want to take that chance. And I just want to encourage, you know, every kid in Amherst and Pelham, Liver and Shootsbury who are coming into to the middle school and into the high school. Like, we've got something for you to try, you know, <laughs> whether it's on a field or in, on a court or on the snow or whatever it happens to be. Um, you know, we have something for everybody. So... I just want to get as many people out exercising as possible. Fantastic. And, and la finally, uh, Rich, just if someone's watching this and they mm -hmm. say, oh, I would love to coach. How do I find out about that? Or, you know, yep. how do I find out about the programs? What's the best way for someone in the community to get in yeah, touch I think, with you? Yeah, I think the best thing to do is, is to reach out to me um, directly by either calling, calling the main office of the high school and getting a hold of me that way, um, sending an email. You can go through Human Resources and they will direct things to me. Right. But um, definitely, I, get, I receive a lot of emails from people saying, hey, I'm interested in coaching and that sort of thing. And I can guarantee you when I see somebody who's interested in coaching, I'm going to get back in touch with you <laughs> very quickly because so, we always need folks. So that's Ferro, F-E-R-R-O-R, -R -R, yep. um, at ARPS.org. You got it. Definitely. Fantastic. Yep. Well, Zora, Rich, thank you so much for sharing with the community. Thank you. Um, what's a very us. successful, and I mean successful not just wins and losses, but successful in terms of life experiences of our students, yep. um, our athletics program. And to the viewers, thank you so much for viewing another episode. We'll be back soon with more from the Amherst Regional Public Schools. Thank you.